you get any sleep last night? I don't sleep. I just dream. Pretty much all of us have had those times when we've had some trouble sleeping. And in a desperate attempt to fall asleep, you might be tempted to reach for that bottle of melatonin. But have you ever been told that melatonin does more than just help with sleep? Because there's actually some fascinating research that is showing melatonin may also be related to sex and reproductive health, act as an antioxidant, and even influence longevity. So today, we're going to show you how and where melatonin is produced, and of course talk about how it relates to sleep, but also discuss some of these other potential interesting functions, and then finish up with if taking melatonin is actually a good idea. It's going to be an exciting one that definitely won't make you sleepy. So let's do this. So let's start with some cool evolutionary information on the gland that secretes melatonin called the pineal gland. And it is known from comparative anatomy that the pineal gland is the vestigial remnant of what is often referred to as a third eye. And I'm not talking about a metaphorical third eye. I'm talking about what is located high on the back of the head in some lower animals, such as certain reptiles and amphibians. And this third eye actually contains photoreceptors, but this is absent in mammals. However, it was present in the extinct relatives of mammals, suggesting that it was lost during the course of mammalian evolution. And because of this, some of the early physiologists were content with the idea that this pineal gland was just a non-functional remnant. But we know now that this is not true, as there has been strong evidence for multiple functions of the pineal gland, some of which may surprise you. And these include playing a role in sex and reproduction, fighting off infections, promoting sleep, enhancing mood, and even potentially increasing longevity as much as 10 to 25 percent. Now, the most commonly discussed function of the pineal gland is its relationship with sleep and melatonin secretion. And so we're going to start with that function, but we will also address some of those other proposed interesting functions. So first, let's get into the anatomy of the pineal gland by taking a look at where it is located in the brain. And of course, discuss how melatonin is secreted. The pineal gland is nestled deep within the center of the brain. And so we're going to use our sagittal head dissection to help us with this. And just to reference a few structures that may come up a little bit later, here we have the pituitary gland. Above the pituitary gland, we have the hypothalamus. And moving just a bit posterior, you can see this small structure right here at the tip of my probe. And this is the pineal gland, which, as you can see, is not a very large structure. It only weighs about 0.1 to 0.2 grams. But don't let its size fool you. It plays a huge role in regulating your circadian rhythm, which is essentially your internal clock that you could kind of think of as your body's built-in alarm system, telling you when it's time to sleep and when it's time to wake up. And how it does this is by secreting the hormone melatonin. And this hormone functions to control your sleep patterns. But the pineal gland doesn't just pump out high levels of melatonin 24-7. It needs a signal or a cue. And that cue is light, or the lack of light. When your eyes perceive light, they send a message back to the suprachiasmic nucleus, which is a very specific region in the hypothalamus, which then tells the pineal gland to turn melatonin production down. So an inverse relationship here. More light means less melatonin. So for example, in daylight, melatonin production is inhibited, keeping you awake and alert. But as soon as the sun sets or the environment darkens, the pineal gland starts secreting more melatonin into the bloodstream, helping you feel sleepy. And during sleep, melatonin levels increase by tenfold. But then they'll start to decline to a lower level again before awakening. Now, some people that are having trouble sleeping may try taking melatonin in the form of a supplement. And we'll get into if that is an effective way of helping with sleep and discuss just some of the pros and cons of melatonin supplementation in just a second. But is melatonin just about helping us sleep? Well, as it was not so subtly implied a little earlier, no, there are some other very interesting functions of melatonin that we are learning more and more about. And let's start with the one that many of you are probably the most curious about, melatonin's relationship to sex and reproduction. And this is actually really fascinating, because after years of research, it does appear that the pineal gland plays a regulatory role in sexual and reproductive function, especially in animals that give birth during certain seasons of the year. 
For example, there have been studies in which the pineal gland has been removed from certain animals and the normal periods of seasonal fertility were lost. And to certain animals, seasonal fertility is important because it allows the offspring to be born at a time of year when survival is more likely, usually spring or early summer. And how this is thought to occur is that during the winter months, when there's less daylight and more hours of darkness each day, this will result in greater melatonin levels. And it is thought that the melatonin will reach the pituitary gland that we pointed out earlier and inhibit the release of two hormones that have powerful effects on the ovaries, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And so if the release of these two hormones is inhibited, this could interfere with the reproductive cycles during the winter months. But does this affect humans? Well, there are still some unknowns with this. However, it clearly doesn't affect humans in the exact same way because human babies are born all year long. Although, I do think it would be kind of funny if humans just had babies during the spring and summer months. It would be utter entertaining seasonal chaos. But I digress a little bit here. In humans, Tumors sometimes occur in the region of the pineal gland, and some of these tumors secrete excessive quantities of melatonin, whereas other tumors made up of surrounding tissues can press on and destroy the pineal gland, resulting in less melatonin production. But both types are often associated with either hypogonadal or hypergonadal function. So this at least suggests that the pineal gland does play some role in controlling sexual drive and reproduction in humans. Another potential function that I mentioned earlier was that melatonin may also influence your mood. For example, seasonal affective disorder, which is a type of depression that affects some people during the winter months when there's again less daylight, this type of depression is thought to be at least in part due to the overproduction of melatonin. And so full spectrum bright light therapy which is a type of phototherapy that involves exposure to full spectrum artificial light that mimics natural sunlight, has been used to treat this and can provide improvement for some people. And as an additional FYI, three to six hours of exposure to bright light also appears to speed recovery from jet lag. And we'll mention a little bit more about jet lag in just a second. But I want to share some interesting research that relates to some of the other proposed functions of the pineal gland. For example, as we age, our melatonin production declines. And this reduction is linked to disruptions in circadian rhythms, as well as some proposed theories about melatonin's relationship to aging. In some fascinating animal studies, scientists explored the relationship between melatonin and longevity by transplanting pineal glands from younger animals into older ones. For example, in one study, older rats who received pineal glands from younger rats showed a significant increase in lifespan compared to control groups. The theory behind these results is that the increased melatonin production from the transplanted pineal glands helped restore proper circadian rhythms, as well as provided enhanced antioxidant protection. Because we've actually known for a while now that melatonin is a potent antioxidant. And so the idea was that the increased melatonin could play a protective role against the free radicals that can cause cellular damage that may be associated with aging. So does this mean that we should all just rush out and pump ourselves full of melatonin or condemn ourselves to darker environments for longer periods of time, or maybe just start supplementing as we get older to try to offset some of that natural decline in melatonin that occurs with aging? Well, obviously not condemn yourself to a dark room, that would be very depressing, but even supplementing should be done with caution for a couple of reasons. First, this research is still relatively new and was conducted on animals. And although animal studies are a step in the process of research, it doesn't always translate the same to humans. So more research is obviously needed when it comes to melatonin's effects on longevity. But with sleep, the use of supplemental melatonin as a nighttime sleep aid has been extensively researched with many studies showing possible small benefits for sleep onset and little to none for sleep maintenance, meaning there may be a small net increase in the total sleep time but the main benefit comes from helping someone to initially fall asleep. So small doses of melatonin given orally can induce sleep and help to reset the circadian rhythm. But most experts still aren't recommending this as your long-term solution to sleep issues. Most advocate for short-term use for maybe a couple of days of insomnia. It could be beneficial for workers that have more erratic work shifts that alternate between daylight and nighttime hours and even used to ease something like jet lag. Typical melatonin doses range from one to five milligrams, 
with some being as high as 20 milligrams. And this would be taken about one to two hours prior to sleep. But most experts, again, typically recommend short-term use starting at the lower dose range. But then of course, after this short-term use, doing your best to bolster your own natural melatonin secretion. And we know how this works now. So how would you bolster your own natural melatonin secretion? Well, this would be winding down one to two hours prior to bed, limiting bright lights and screen time so that your eyes can tell your suprachiasmic nucleus to tell your pineal gland that it's time to go to bed. One of my favorite things about learning and teaching anatomy and physiology is that these are foundation sciences, the building blocks that you can apply to health, fitness, and medicine. And building a strong foundation of learning is critical to your educational journey. And that's why I'm excited to introduce the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing interactive online learning platform with thousands of lessons in math, science, data analysis, programming, and even AI. And as I already implied, Brilliant is designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up, creating that strong learning foundation. Each lesson is hands-on and interactive, letting you play with and explore concepts, which is a method that has been proven to be extremely effective. Brilliant also does an incredible job helping you build critical thinking skills through problem solving and not just through blind memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you're also becoming a better thinker. And still one of my favorite Brilliant lessons that's helping me to become a better thinker is exploring data visually which helps you to brush up your skills on analyzing and interpreting data from charts and graphs, which has been really helpful for me when going through research studies to prepare for YouTube videos. So if you wanna try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org IHA or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So hopefully you learned some new and useful information in today's video. And if you wanna learn more about sleep and how sleep relates to something like growth hormone, We'll link that video here. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.